Gilad Shiba Shalom. Shalom And welcome to Culture Buzz. I'm very happy to be here. Actually, Gila, we are your guests. Well, Gila. finally, we made it to Keshet Eilon. Right. So, thank you for your wonderful hospitality. And will you be kind enough, Gilad, to tell us a few words about this magnificent event, annual event, drawing the most talented violinists from all over the world for quite a few years now. How do you do it, Gilad? Well, the truth is that I owe the, the originals, the founders that came to the kibbutz. This kibbutz was established in 1938. Most of the founders came from Europe, from Poland, uh, and uh, they brought with them a wonderful music tradition. We were the second generation, and I know that when they had only a half uh, an egg and an olive to eat, they bought a second-hand piano, <laughs> they established a choir, and uh, these days uh, we didn't have uh, any uh, electronics, no equip no computers, no, uh, you know, nothing was there, uh, just uh, acoustic music. So they were very special, and they understood that the education is a very important value, and they brought you wonderful musicians and choirs, and. Uh, and arts and the theater and that's how we grew up. Later on they brought a wonderful, wonderful dear friend that passed away, music uh, teacher, his name was Avi Blackman, that I owe also to him a lot because uh, during his period in the 60s uh, he uh, attracted all the, the youngsters, the teenagers, uh, to play on an instrument. If you didn't play a, a music instrument you were an outsider. Uh, in those days, you know, to boys to wear red, it was like a little... And he wore the red sweater, everyone wore a, a, a red sweater. And uh, uh, those who had a better ear, they, they were... Uh, those who had a better ear, they, they played the violin, others played, uh, uh, you know, piano and wind instruments. And uh, finally, it was a kibbutz in an old, very old system, uh, that used to be in the past. Uh, I, when I finished army, uh, I understood that I can't continue anymore to playing the violin because I had a break of three years. And then the kibbutz that made all the decisions for us. It's not that we were able to make our own decisions, but uh, they needed a music teacher, so they sent me to study music. And uh, uh, Luckily, I went to study music because there I met my wife, uh, which was the answer for not continuing the violin. Uh, but <laughs> I was teaching, I was teaching uh, many years, and uh, according to the background that I just described, uh, in, I was teaching like 20-something years here in the high school, in the region high school. And uh, at 89, I finished my degree of, in music. And uh, I discovered that there's a music camp uh, of uh, uh, Noah Musicali, how would you call it? Musical youth. Okay, musical youth. And uh, we decided to bring them here at 89 to the kibbutz. And uh, I thought it was will be just uh, a one event like. But uh, it happened that in 1990 started the huge wave of immigration from Russia. And that was like a a perfect glove to your hand and uh, we brought a group of 12 young Russian violinists. One of them was Vadim Gluzman that is right here. He was then 16 years old and uh, and they were kidding, they were talking about the kibbutz like Kolkhoz from Russia. They were only two <laughs> weeks here in Israel. But after two weeks they didn't want to leave so we, we, we said okay we'll invite you once again. The kibbutz was still in the old fashion and uh, they were very happy and welcoming everyone. And uh, they felt at home. They felt at home, and they didn't want to leave. So we invited them again and again. And very quickly, I uh, I was aware that uh, if it's going to happen more than two, three times, it needs uh, a fundraising. And uh, I don't know how, with our senses, we we established our own nonprofit organization. And uh, Slowly, slowly, I reduced my music teaching 
and they started, started working more uh, with Kesha Taylor. We attract wonderful uh, musicians and they brought other violinists and uh, along the years uh, we added uh, more string players, viola and cello and even double bass and uh, today we have about 1,050 or 1,100 graduates uh, along the years. Amazing. Uh, performing all over the world. Performing all over the world. The, I can say the best more. ambassadors Kibbutz Eilon can have. I think even in the country, not only Kibbutz Eilon, I think the ambassadors of Israel. Yeah. Because they, you can introduce, maybe you introduce some of the musicians. They come here, they, are, they thought Israel is only terror and the war and... Uh, and uh, it's very, you know, very calm and nice and uh, pastoralic and nature and, and uh, it's a wonderful atmosphere. By the way, these youngsters, they chose a very competitive life. Uh, and uh, our goal is to change this atmosphere to a family atmosphere, which is exactly the opposite. And the way they live, the way they go to the dining hall together and sit with the f professors, the way they... The whole life here makes it, uh, uh, you know, the the atmosphere as we would like it to be, and which uh, makes uh, Kesha Teilon even more unique compared with other similar uh, that events all over the, the world. The, right. This you should ask the students because I can't uh, be my own, uh, you know. But but uh, uh, along the years we understood that uh, we have to evacuate the old, very very old. Uh, buildings that the kibbutz loaned us uh, and uh, we have to make a very tough decision would we like to keep and stay in the north part of Israel which we believe that they deserve the people in the north and the south uh, for high quality of uh, culture or should we do it so easily in the center of the country uh, and then you can come uh, during the summer you can rent a nice hotel pay much less and, uh, of course, everything is easier. The, the hard thing is to do it in the remote areas. Uh, but we did the, the hard decision. And now, luckily, we are starting to build the first uh, eight units for the dormitories for the students. Mm. And uh, hopefully we are going to have more money for completing the dormitories and maybe a cafeteria. You just saw the cafeteria here. It's a very old building yeah. that uh, is not in use except when we are here. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, we would like to see it active all year round. Maybe one more sentence. Uh, Keshet in Hebrew is a bow, but uh, we look on Keshet not only as a bow of instrument. It's, uh, for us, it's a bow as a bridge between nations and cultures and uh, uh, people. And uh, we find that uh, through music you can uh, make more understanding with no so much words. A musical rainbow with all the colors. Right, right. Which is very important for us and this is what we are trying to do. Wonderful. We, we also hope that there's no need uh, for anyone who is really very gifted uh, that he will never say he can't come because of financial problems. So we try to support them in a way. Excellent. Gilad Shiba, I would like to thank you very much not only for your wonderful hospitality also for taking the time because we know how busy you are since running such an event is uh, quite demand demandful. So, wishing you, Keshat Eilon, all the musicians, all the success in the world. Toda and shalom. Thank you very, very much.